unmute பண்ணுங்க ஆ unmute பண்ணிட்டேன் ஓகே ஓகே சார் we will start sir now we will start charles yes okay sir ah sorry organizing secretary solitar okay we will start uh, good evening friends now the afternoon lecture will be on societal values of geomorphic geomorphological studies and the, it is presented by dr r srinivasan dr r srinivasan is a deputy director general retired from gl gl to survey of india north eastern region shillong dr srinivasan has completed his undergraduation from presidency college and post graduation from university of madras and also he has completed his phd from university of madras and um, he has joined gsi in the year 1980 and uh, he has worked in different uh, designations there he uh, entered as a geologist and uh, promoted as senior geologist and superintending geologist and director and uh, he has been promoted as deputy director general of gsi northeastern region in 2015 and he got retired from northeastern region as a deputy director general gsi and uh, as the speakers i said warning all the resource persons are well versed and having so much of years of experience dr srinivasan is expertise in multi multi discipline he is actually when i was talking to him he was uh, having so much of uh, knowledge in field in every every aspects uh, i can say some of them uh, he is specialized in landslide studies he worked in landslide studies he is an expert in gas and remote sensing and he was uh, he was working for past 20 years in engineering geology now and he is also part of various expert committee meeting and uh, dr srinivasan is uh, uh, unique in uh, one thing is he was deputed to isro very rarely a geoscientist is from other agencies are been deputed, deputed to isro so he was deputed as a senior scientist here he was work for two years in isro as a, in a deputation and he has contributed many many aspects to isro and is having vast knowledge of field in the entire country and uh, as i said uh, he was a member of various committee and uh, his biotech is having so much of uh, pages and i just want to uh, make an abstract of it with a small word i invite dr r srinivasan to present his presentation sir please sir. yeah thank you um... hod and uh, i sincerely thank all the you know participants for this webinar and many seniors are there and uh, there are many students uh, so you please continue okay i am audible can i continue yes, sir, sir? Yes, sir. please please continue my, my, okay so slide is visible my face is on the side you should share Uh, you should share the slides sir first share the yeah, slides sir first slides is slides are already shared is it uh, coming no sir charles uh, charles charles please allow sir share slide sir allow panni de sir ah okay sir slides are there sir slides is visible now yes sir yeah slides are visible so um, sorry for the brief inter uh, you know interruption and um, so look, today let us see uh, you know the unique concept of uh, uh, the uh, geomorphology as it is how best uh, it is useful to the society not that uh, other branches of geology are uh, you know not beneficial to the society every 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 you know the branch of geology or spectrum of geology or discipline of geology are certainly relevant to the societal development and every you know science contributes to the you know the progress and improvement of society so today we will briefly see 
how the society gets benefited by the geomorphological study, the relevance of the geomorphology for the society, that let us see. So uh, initially we will see some, um, you know, the brief introduction of geomorphology, then it's application. So applications, uh, how it is useful to the, our, uh, you know, the progress. So let us see. So geomorphology, as you all know, very, very, uh, even though you all well versed and taught to you in the general geology, undergraduate level itself. So briefly in one or two slides, let us make it. Huh? So the, the, the lecture will be more on the application, uh, you know, than on many of the fundamentals of the subject. So I oriented uh, that way. So it is a scientific study of landform. And the, so it is a landform and its application to the, uh, you know, other uh, aspects of the science. So. The landforms are created by the some of the earth processes. So the processes that cause and alter the landform and the landforms are formed by the, uh, you know, um, uh, general uh, uh, geological and uh, other atmospheric processes. So, so landforms are, uh, the every fundamental question that is asked is, where are the landform, which are the landform, how these are formed? Because they are, they are very much varied. Landforms can form in the, uh, you know, mountain landforms can form in the valley, landforms can form in the coastal plain. So the landforms are uh, on the earth's surface. It is just like our face, which has got a nose, eyes, ear, and all that. It is a general, uh, you know, the, the, the forms and morphology of the earth's surface. They are formed by the alteration of the earth's surface. Earth's surface is continuously altered by naturally, as well as by the human being. So we will just see in the lecture how the interaction between the earth's surface and the natural forces. What are the natural forces? So we will see that alter the earth's surface and create a landform. It is a dynamic process. It is taking from the time remember since the earth was born, its surface is continuously altered. Like our human being, our, our, our body surface is continuously altered. As we age, more and more wrinkles will come. Ah, that's a change in our morphology itself. So like that, earth surface is also, as it gets older and older, it is getting continuously modified or altered. Earth surface is eroded. Earth surface is eroded. Then that materials are transported and they are deposited. So consequently, you get some erosional land, uh, land features. Then, 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 then you get some deposition. So in the broad basket, it's an erosional landforms and are the geomorphic units and deposition geomorphic units. You see, the fund, today we, we, we will concentrate more on the you know, fluvial and the um, uh, coastal landform than on the these glaciers and the you know the desert landform. Uh, so we will see these two the wave wave characteristics because uh, the coastal we are much familiar and the inland uh, you know uh, the geomorphology of uh, um, uh, the fluvial so fluvial landform and the you know the uh, we have created landform let us see but landforms are equally um, uh, you know created in the by the glaciers at the mountain and wind activity and all that so it's a very very uh, you know very well we will see a lot of you know like chennai pala palavaram are in salem or number of you know, isolated hills so all from the arcane time onward the terrain is getting eroded 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 you get some remnant deal you will get insel birds then on that slope you get some pediments where slope the, the materials are eroded kept on the slope itself then the uh, then slowly the the, the the hilltops are you know flattened you get some plateau so that's also called butte and uh, you know mesa and all that you would have read in your um, uh, you know the first year itself on the general geology and geomar i won't wait much but still it is it is transported by the uh, you know through the valley into a, by the rivers into alluvial uh, fan and uh, on the slope it will become a colluvial. So like that there are number of landforms or fluvial landforms are formed from plateau to uh, this one. So if we see, so we see here a yeah, 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 deeply entrenched river is flowing. No, from the, it slowly cut its terrain, it's going deeper and deeper. We imagine any canyon. Uh, so so you, which you normally see uh, in the Western Ghats or Gandhikota in Andhra Pradesh or in the Himalayas or Grand Canyon of Colorado you see number of canyons will be always you know created by the uh, by the you know raising of the land and cutting by the stream it's own uh, this one bed level is lower and lower so you 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 get some 
you get some terraces on the side ah so it becoming lower so you get some oxbow legs yeah so you you get some fan active point bar at the curvature of the stream eh? so this is reworked by the wind you get some yellow and blown sand so some levees levees are very which we see in the palar and uh, uh, you know the punniyar kaveri at the at the flood plain is bound by a, a natural levee then there is a flood basin or a back basin will be there so we we it is a generally we get some you know the terrace uh, so then we have well, different level of terrace on both the side uh, slowly is getting bank streams meander we will see a inner channel inner flood plain inner channel and all that we will see that so we will just see if from the top of the hill there will be a little bit more detail we will see a, a slope how the slopes the slopes hill slopes hill slopes are nilgiri hill slope number of hill slopes are modified you get upper back slope you get a lower back slope a foot slope the toe of the slope the slope from submit or the hill peak to a lower part is divided into number of you know part of slopes so then you after the hill is you 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 get, you get into a, a kind of a terrace which are at higher level than the river bed level so you the, you you see in this slide also the generally so hill slopes are eroded then hill slope deposition material will be there then from the colluvial setup from the hill erosion and deposition you get into a alluvial set so alluvial deposition takes place like it flood plain terrace and all that so if we see the cross section you see the the due to that um, you know here yeah, from the river bed level we go every year the flood plain is expanding expand old chennai city is on the flood plain of the kuvam and the you know the adiyar and all that so flood plain limits are far and wide the past we go you know, in the old in flood plain or historical flood plain in the 1000 year 10000 year so upper plain so like that it is you get some different level of flood plain then you get the terrace Uh, yeah, yeah, former terrace. Then you get some upland also. A cross section of the valley, it will be like that. Why I have specifically put this because the rivers, most of the rivers which are flowing in the inland area and going closer to the coast, they leave their imprint in the form of past flood plain terraces. So that's a very vital that you will see. So all this morphological, um, you know, you very briefly I have conveyed the ultimate aim of any geologist. Or a, a, a geographer or a geomorphologist he is to prepare a map, which you know very well. The maps are the fundamental, uh, you know, the base document by which all our studies, our integration, our interpretation, all our conclusions. Sir, your voice is very loud. Your voice is fine, sir. Sinivasan. Sir. Huh? Hello. Voice is okay. Sinivasan, sir. Ah ah. Un unmute, please. Ah hello. மேப்ஸ்டிக் மேப் லைக் இட் இஸ் ஃபண்டமெண்டலி யூஸ்ஃபுல் ஃபார் எனி ஜியாலஜிக்கல் மேப்பிங் ஆர் இஸ் அ பேசிக் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் அண்ட் ஃபார்மஸ்ட் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ஜியோமர்ஃபி ஒன் சுட் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் தட் ஸோ அ லேண்ட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் ஆர் டெபிக்டட் இன் த ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் அ மேப் விச் இஸ் மோர் ஆர் லெஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு தி அண்டர்லைன் ஜியாலஜி எ லேண்ட் ஃபார்ம் ஹவு இட் இஸ் யூ நோ எவால்ட் அண்ட் திஸ் ஒன் வீ வில் சி லிட்டில் பிட் லேட்டர் ஐ லிங்கிங் ஐ வில் டெல் பட் இட் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் ரிலேட்டட் அண்டர்லைன் ஜியாலஜி ஸோ பேசிகலி அ ஜியோமார்ஃபாஜிக்கல் மேப் இஸ் ப்ரிப்பேர்ட் இன் அ சிஸ்டமேட்டிக் மேனர் ஆல் த லேண்ட் ஃபார்ம்ஸ் ஆர் especially uh, with the coordinate we plot wherever there is a pretty plain or a pediment or a, you know sand dune so it is prepared in the form of a map this is a sample map i am showing so in this yeah pa two dimensional map is a two dimensional uh, so which will show you all the you know geomorphic units or a landform and escarpment or highly dissected slope so yeah hill top moderately dissected slope ridge rolling plain valley so like that we prefer whatever the geomorphology or the um, uh, you know the landform unit in its spatial position in different scale based on our objective and need it may be on a bonus 50000 or 10000 or 25000 based on the objective a geomorphological map is prepared depicting all these fluvial or eolian or a, a coastal uh, uh, or a glacier 
whatever they are volcanic landform a variety of landforms are depicted by a map like this so now it comes the real crux of the issue today's talk is there social relevance geomorphology is only an academic exercise or social necessity the fundamental question sir geomorphology always it is academic exercise or valley we will tell hills we will tell so it is an academic exercise normally it is an ignore but there is a lot of usefulness that is why this topic is conveyed to you you can do a very good research on geomorphology geomorphology contributes to the society this slide you know emphasizes that this slide emphasizes that it's an academic exercise or a social necessity geomorphology research can be beneficial it leads to so geomorphology is is this period is called after holocene it's an anthropocene because the landforms i told you all continuously modified or interfered by the human being now all the land, earth surface is now you know in, in interaction between human activity and the earth surface or geomorphology is there we are in an anthropocene uh, period so in this period how the morphology is modified or it going in a you know uh, beneficial way or in a uh, damaging way you have to see because number of human settlements have come in urban area or in a you know a rural area or a hilly area they alter the we 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 people we great people alter the geomorphic process uh, so 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 we 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 you uh, know uh, a kind of a, we modify to our convenience so that has got a very 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 you know direct bearing in the flooding or landslide or debris flow so there are lot of geomorphic issues and society a society has got a lot of geomorphic issues so geomorphology is the basic first and critical step so and the forms of, so what is the societal values and the geomorphology is the first and basic map in any activity of earth now there is a phase of there is a border uh, you know the line of control conflict between india and china the first and foremost job that is done is a terrain evaluation both the sides do for a defense purpose see indian indian army has got a separate unit in delhi for a terrain evaluation sir there is a you know national defense research establishment or adrin in hyderabad we have a, we have by the you know complete the terrain is evaluated the morphological character of the kalwan valley or shok river see where are the river where it is linking whether river is changing course so what is the slopes of the hill can we put the road so the fundamentally even for today as on today the present day hot topic is also time and again so much of morphology is shown to you so that is a very very vital the, 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 we we anxiously look for the, the 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 conflicting point of india and china by the terrain evaluation geomorphology comes to the fore army is in need of geomorphologist so you kindly understand that then we can uh, just uh, after going from the today's uh, this one so regional groundwater uh, you know delineation groundwater delineation geomorphology is a basic map then geo environmental issue uh, geomorphology is a basic map landslide geomorphology is a basic map then mineral exploration also at the first instance how the morphology is looked how the terrain is so tourism so a number of number of number of teams are depending on the geomorphology okay so i don't now let us see one by one how it goes eh? so uh, i think except except the corona and geomorphology most of our, all our you know scientific activity are related to geomorphology ah uh, maybe uh, they, they, we have to still see the research how the virus and geomorphology has some control we have to see uh, maybe uh, uh, in the flooding in the flooding uh, chapter when we come we can see that also we will try to fit covid 19 and geomorphology also so hydro geomorphology how it goes you see so ground water investigation the 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 first and basic hydrogeomorphic mapping has become an integral part huh? this audience has got uh, you know uh, you have people from the you know ground water board what board and all that so they know very well hydrogeomorphology is there first and foremost before putting our restivity meter or looking into the l to narrow down the area which terrain to go so paleo river courses a paleo channel which are if we can locate that sure shot of putting a drill hole there and getting a lot of water that possibility is there so in the paleo river courses we identify through geomorphological mapping it is a wonderful job then cut off meander sand ridges deeply weathered zone fractures and lineaments in the rock all along the slope so they they indicate a possible groundwater zone as opposed to the then then there are the pediments are there 
then tidal mud flat you have moderate potential low potential suppose tidal flat mud flats are low potential pediment and all moderate potential so the paleo channel and cut off meander and weathered deeply weathered zone and a high potential groundwater zone so investigation for groundwater may be by selecting the areas to avoid the loss of time and effort you are given a district to go and look for some aquifer system and all that first and foremost hydrogeomorphology maps are prepared exactly the 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 the, the chennai metro water or tamil nadu water supply drainage board they prepared the entire tamil nadu they prepared the hydrogeomorphological map without hydrogeomorphological map all the district collector may be having a hydrogeomorphological map you kindly see the important of geomorphology in the groundwater location and divining which part of the terrain is more congenial to host water that is that is always you know taken care by this exercise so groundwater potential zone and the landforms are always interrelated so a yeah, 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 sample hydrogeomorphological map is now uh, uh, you know shown to you which is showing you how to prepare i already showed you a denudation hill uh, a dissected pediment pedi plain undulating plain so with the with the you know uh, accurately to the scale we will prepare all the landform unit on a map as per the orientation of the hydrogeomorphism we have to delineate as per the hydrogeomorphology uh, then put the, all the lineament from fractures and some drainages now this map is the overlaying of drainage drainage density uh, drainage uh, the texture and some fracture zone put it over the you no know, geomorphological map uh, with the plateau and uh, uh, you know with the, with the structural hill denudation hill uh, pedi plain pediment older fluvial plain residual hill so we you 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 a little bit add these two three things uh, and i see how it goes now along with the geomorphology lineament and drainage i already shown you we, we can add soil also land use land cover so geomorphology is the core or the heart of the whole hydro uh, geo hydro, uh, hydro hydro geological investigation then along this it is built up with the other thematic maps Uh, and some ranking is given finally a groundwater potential map is made ready so this is the groundwater potential map which is showing very good potential area good potential moderate potential poor very poor and all that so this is arrived then when wherever this very good good potential is there we can now go to the ground uh, put some restivity surveys or you put a drill hole and see how much it goes or you if we can consult the geological map so what will be we can see the wells there already existing tube wells how much of the uh, you know the water yield and all that so to delineate that basically we have to arrive at a broad work of very good good moderate poor that that maps comes through the geomorphology only now this another topic is the geo environmental study and so here all, again the eminent people are there who have done dr ganeshan and all that so yeah any environmental study whether it is for urban town whether it's for chennai or a coimbatore or a salem or along the coast yeah basic map is a geomorphology yeah urban geomorphological map or a coastal geomorphological map or rural geomorphological map so yeah let us see I, I, the time is less constrained so we will just see the coastal you know landforms and shoreline changes so you know the coast is always made up of you know beaches and some you know sand and dunes then some tidal flats so like that it is again one more uh, you know paleo uh, you know uh, strand line or paleo dunes then paleo tidal flat estuary creek like that coastal got lot of land form so these are formed by the past sea level rise then past storm even a human impact also is there so we see a, a, a chennai coast or a tamil nadu coast or a pondicherry coast so always the the, land, the coastal land form is indicative of the past sea level and past storm events and the human impact so geomorphological response to coastal then engineering coastal number of harbor the ports and structures of uh, everything has come they alter the existing geomorphology so we have to do coastal and estuarine system mapping it is useful for coastal zone management we have to manage our coastal zone so tamil nadu government or any government or indian government has got a separate management authority coastal zone management authority they have the geomorphological map is a bible to them they know they should know where is high water line where is low water line where, up to what limit you have the dunes what is the you know from where the clay tidal clay starts where are the estuary so like that 
So some of the examples I show you in this way. You see here, yeah, 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 yeah. Creek. These are the you know beaches. Then some younger coastal dunes have started. Uh, then some creeks have come from the you know uh, 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 sea to the inland. It is flowing. Uh, then some older dunes are there. This satellite Google image itself gives us some morphological expression. So it's a more or less estuarine condition. Uh, so with a little bit of some with the yellow, some orange color, some yellowish colored, you know, older dunes are there. Then you get some pretty plain. You get to the hilly area. So from fluvial to the coastal, you get that. So this area has got a lot of morphological. This one. Now continuity of that. So continuity of this slide. We just see south of that. We will just see south of that. Uh, uh, one more. The, we will see the, the, the continuity of this creek. We will see in the another slide. You see, oh, yeah, yeah. It is at north of Pondicherry, Kalivelli Tank, uh, and this is a Marakanam area where we saw that creek water coming in and all that. So it is uh, flowing. It was uh, maybe some thousand years ago or some two thousand. In the in the Wallasian time, a yeah, very big, very big lagoon. Now it's a Kalivelli Lake. Earlier it was a Kalivelli Lagoon. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know, uh, sea water was completely flowing. Uh, now it was a very big lagoon. You see, the water was flowing through this channel completely. There is always a spit growth will be there. This extended a yeah, sandbar is called a spit. It grows and completely crosses this creek both. At so the morphological study, the evolution of the morphology, how it evolving from the beach, a spit is growing and it will grow, grow and stronger and it will close the creek mouth. So it will, the morphology is altered naturally. This is because of the offshore sediment movement and sometimes due to the human interference also. But here in this case, the offshore sediments are moving. They are bringing the sand for the deposition, a natural coastal process for the morphology development, coastal geomorphology. But sometimes these mouths are closed, not only in the Kaliveli area, number of Tamil Nadu, right, starting from the Pulikart Lake, you know, the geomorphological expression of the creek mouth closure is creating some changes in the inner area of denying the seawater coming into the inland, forming a lagoon. Uh, you see how, 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 and it will, it will slowly, it will slowly becoming a freshwater tank from the estuarine system. Uh, so there is an alteration of the, uh, you know, the uh, pre-existing morphology and it has a bearing on the human development also because the estuarine, the, the salt panning by the Kaliveli and some fishing community, the mangrove swamps, a number of mangrove swamps are here, all got now, uh, you know, degraded and dark in the Marakana area, salt pans are suffering because the salt water is not flowing through this down below. The mouth is blocked. So this kind of morphological study, now you have to dredge it, allow it, again the sandbar will grow. The sandbar growth by the morphological, uh, you know, study that completely by the offshore littoral sediment movement. So how much it goes, how much. So like that, so morphology plays a great role. It's a coastal environmental issue. Coastal environmental problem, one simple, small simple sample I showed you. Uh, so we have to prepare a, a, a coastal environmental map like this. A geomorphological map is a base for them. A base geomorphological map is prepared. Putting a, a you know, the environmental aspect like silting, uh, upward high dune, gully erosion, silting of lagoon, yeah, quarrying, like that we will put over the geomorphological map. An yeah, insel map, upland, pretty plain, pretty. So, this is the you know, north of Pondicherry, the geomorphological map with the environmental aspect mark. It's a fundamental base document as on today. Like that, we can prepare a, which is the same kind of map. We can prepare some, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, a time sequential, temporally, we can study changes in the morphology by naturally as well as naturally as well as human process, we can study. So you can also prepare this kind of map, you know, by your effort from the satellite imagery, then ground field work, and thorough checking. Yeah. So it shows you all the tidal inlet, tidal, you know, lagoon. So I told you this lagoon and all that now. So like that, we get a recent dunal complexes, uh, mangrove swamp, salt pan, like that, number of issues are pretty plain, older, cuddle with sandstone, pretty plain and all that. So it is a so useful to the society. Society is in need of such thing. Where are changes taking place along coast? More than the geology, it is to be combined with the geomorphology itself. Now, for example, during 2004 tsunami time, how much water came? This is a Kadulur area. Why? 
again the best geomorphological map. Again, some scientists are sitting here who are participants who are working with the best geomorphology and tsunami impact study. Entire Tamil Nadu coast was covered. So that was a wonderful job. So we know by the best geomorphology, a tidal flood, recent you know, flood plain and all that, how much the you know, tsunami brought in the sediment. These are all silted area in the Kadluri area. How we got, you see, the creek, a creek is a more land unit, huh? we, yeah, which is uh, in this area. A yeah, sand dune is there, they are totally connected by yeah, inner, inner dune, older dune and younger dunes are covered by a kind of a creek. So when tsunami water came from Kadilam River, Kadilam River mouth and this Ponyar River mouth, the whole, this whole area got encircled by the water flowing in this creek. Then elevation, the, the topographic elevation of the, the dunal height, whether, whether it got degraded in the, in, the, in the recent time or man-made impact or natural effect, the whole area got flooded or the inundated by the tsunami by morphological characters of the terrain. Kadal would support, now but not support by morphological character. Okay, people lived closer together, they were living, you know, fishermen had to, but the morphology played a great role in the tsunami, you know, disaster. One has to understand your morphological uh, character of the each coastal unit to avoid in the future tsunami, to where to avoid living, why that, but here's a small example I showed you, how the water flowed from sea as well as from the creek, the creeks are encircling, so we have to, you know, construct some barrier in the future and all that. So silting took place. The water came. Tsunami brought a lot of, uh, you know, in the river, in the river bed, in the river flood plain, in the river bed, a lot of silting took place. So water could not move inland. It, it attacked the coastal area in the river mouth area because the silt was obstructing. All your morphology telling you the story. So wonderful tool. So again, the salinity problem in the Ramnad area by geomorphological mapping. So we see the, the double dollar and all hyper saline area, the single dollar and all, uh, you know, moderate saline area. Classify the salinity problem, a environmental problem, application of geomorphology to environment. Where are the areas saline along Tamil Nadu coast? Can you do me? Only geomorphological map is bringing the, 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 where the areas are hyper saline, where the areas are moderately saline, where the areas are not saline itself. So, Again, yeah, 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 sand dune beach, yeah, sand dune, yeah, tidal flat. So inner, yeah, paleo tidal flat. So salinity by the inherent marine formation and past sea incursion. Where are the past sea incursion? We will only a morphological map. This is the geomorphological map. I trimmed it uh, for clarity. Geomorphological map of some of the, the, the coastal area to show the salinity. Important social aspect. People are suffering by salinity, agricultural activity and drinking water purpose, the great saline problem are, you know, in the southern Tamil Nadu coast. The best the document is geomorphology only. So it has a wonderful social application. A lot of research can be done on that. So this is the in that, in that with reference to this map, this is the, you know, coastal dune and all that I told. So this is a field, field check. Every map, every geomorphology to be completely thoroughly analyzed in the field. This may not be that, that cell line or sand dunes and all that elevation and incurs. Maybe a storm surge will, water will flow beyond this point. But it is, it is, it is more or less, uh, you know, a good, good, uh, uh, a brackish or a, a good water point. But you see this area uh, with the, with the uh, flat plane of the, um, uh, you know, the paleo tidal flat, uh, with the little black cotton coasting and uh, white like, uh, you know, calcrete and uh, gypsum nodule and all that. It is a saline area. You see the complete landform here. It will itself tell. Now this is a hypersaline area. This is a hypersaline area with the morphology of a, you know a flat a, a paleo tidal flat. So you yeah, kindly understand the basic of what are the geomorphic unit. Uh, it can come in the coastal area. Okay, tidal flat, paleo tidal flat. Do you like that, yes, student? Once that concept is clear and how they are evolved in the you know Holocene and the Pleistocene and Holocene time. Then we can work out the you know, fundamental concept should be there. Then only the map has to come. Or what are the geomorphic units? How they have evolved? Where they are spatially located? Map them and their implication in our application. So this hypersaline area with the with, with the you know um, calcrete and gypsum and uh, you know black cotton soil and all that along the coast. So again a plain area like that. It is a very, very important, so far I have showed you, geom environmental problem, how the geomorphology is useful. First we saw how the groundwater 
which could be located by geomorphology. Then environment and geomorphology. Now we see how the geomorphology can help in landslide studies. Any natural hazard geomorphology is very, very important. For a landslide study, geomorphology is very, very important. So the relationship of geomorphology unit to landslide is studied. The, so for any uh, basic landslide map, the first and foremost, whether it's for flooding or a landslide or a seismicity, the geomorphology is a great indicator. In a Nilgiri area, which area can slide further? Morphology only will tell us, then only the geology will come. Geomorphology area, which area is prone to landslide? Puno, Rare, you know, the Udakamand and all that. The slope morphology, the slope morphology will tell like that. So the soil volume of the each geomorphological unit in a hilly area. Now the hilly area geomorphology has come. See, coastal geomorphology we saw. Inland area, river and... Now hilly area geomorphology. The mountain geomorphology. And its application in the landslide. So where are the ground movement takes place? Where are the mass movement will take place? Uh, how, how it can, uh, how, how it can um, uh, you know, help us in deciphering. So uh, the landslide uh, zonation, landslide zonation, the geomorphological characteristics are very important to identify the massive landslide potential of the area. Uh, you know very well. So this is a general slope. So you, you sudden, all of a sudden, when the slide takes place, you get a scar. Escarpment, basic geomorphology term is escarpment. In a landslide area, escarpus. Then subsidence of the terrain. So, we, we, as you walk in a mountain, we know automatically suddenly some depression or subsidence. A morphological expression of the hill slope. So, you, you, we get some, oh, oh, this area will be, a, you know, slowly going down and down and down. So, this area is going down. There's a mass movement. Then some cracks on the slope. So, the morphology gives along a, a kind of a slope failure with the slope material. What was the slope material on a hill slope? Eh, how, how it going, we see. So geomorphological survey determine the slope class. So relation between their slope relief and the height of the slope. So what is the slope angle? Whether it is a higher the slope angle, more riskier. So some slope, these are a, a flat horizontal plateau where houses are there, no issue. No, no hazard. But when we come here, this has become a high hazard. This is a moderate hazard. The, the slope angle is a very important thing. Then height of the slope, height of the slope. A yeah, hill slope, what will be the height of the slope? So that is the relief of the slope, angle of the slope. So the nature of the slope. So this slope morphometry is very important in the landslide. You see how a steep slope is failing, uh, a toe erosion by the uh, you know sea and all that. So just to show you some example, various kind of a, you know spur or, or a ridge and its slope angle, what is the material. So only morphology will tell the story itself. Uh, just to show you. So, see, this is all the many beds are there. They are dipping into the hill. You see, these are the escarpment slope. This is a dip slope. Any morphology, so we have to identify what is a dip slope, what is the escarpment slope. So, because all the beds are dipping this side. All the beds are going on to your right side of the screen. So, this, the, with the result, the landslide potential of this area may not be that, that, that severe because the beds are dipping and the other side. So we have to you know, go by each area why the morphology itself will be caution us. But you see some old, old landslides have taken here. Here some scars are there. Here some scars, scars are there. So on the, uh, you know, the dip slope side, there will be more slide takes place. Huh? You see, this is a, once again in an Ilgiri area. I showed you already the area is sunken slowly. Mass is moving. You, you get some, yeah, 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 scarp has come. So this slope has failed. This is on the tea garden has come. So again it will fail your slope, again it will fail. So just a morphology, a plateau was just a, a, a slope was coming like that. Suddenly there's a gradient drop. Uh, then there is a depression and there is a sinking material. We can map it as it is. We can map it as it is. We can draw a cross section. We can draw a longitudinal section. We'll bring out the elevation. With the nature of material, then underlying geology, we can work out the solution for this landslide. But the basic geomorphology is the stand. So this is a, already a deposited a colluvial material. A colluvium is the one which is on the slopes of the hill, you know, from the, uh, it's a paleo slide debris. So 
now they are cutting that one also now this will this the whole thing will fail so we have to avoid this colluvial material dangerous for the as a morphological expression a geomorphology so ill colluvial slopes are uh, you know risky or more susceptible or more vulnerable so these are the ill colluvium uh, on a hill so avoid this one so mapping this colluvium as a morphological area um, a morphology of the area is very useful so a paleo landslide scar a spoon type so this gives a morphology itself says a old slide took place here uh, from a, you suddenly get a concave portion just 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 appraisal of the you know the 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 con with the terrain itself will tell you more some clues uh, to, to achieve our objective initially then detail work has to be done so a broad bird's eye view understanding and it, to, to appreciate the perspective is highly important to go through geomorphology a paleo scar uh, in the kunur area like that stuff. now again for a landslide purpose is geomorphological map to be prepared and overlay all the landslide potential in that the highly dissected slope a low dissected slope so highly dissected slope uh, in the slope holes are dissected then pretty much escarpment i told you escarpment so you prepare a map for the landslide give some weightage uh, ranking which area will now the geomorphology class escarpment low dissected moderate dissected these are there in the uh, you know hilly area yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe in kodaikanal or in the kerala western ghat or nilgiri these are the unit will mostly you will get it uh, Yeah, I, I dissected slope, escarpment, and the pretty plain, pretty. Now these have to be given a yeah, kind of a ranking and value. The highly dissected slope has got been given a maximum value. Escarpment, I told you already. So you, you saw in the previous slide. So a yeah, lesser importance. So like that, some weightage and ranking is given. How much of the study area is occupied this morphological unit? A yeah, pretty much pretty plain contact ridge top and all that. Valley fill. So valley fill may be good for groundwater. Uh, but but for the landslide purpose it is we can we can we can ignore it also uh, so like that we can classify the morphologically for a landslide purpose and put some zonation uh, uh, for the landslide now comes the, the great great uh, you know the 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 flood mapping for any urban flood mapping or a rural flood mapping the fundamental document prepared by scientists whether it's a civil engineer or any planner or a geologist or a geographer the geomorphology of the chennai city is the first and foremost important geomorphology of the urban area is very very important ha uh, so we we have to have a kind of a high mountain ranges your foothill the, the what are the flooding domain for flood types flood can take place in a mountain area flood can take place foothill area a large flood plain uh, in the in the in the uh, all on both the sides of the valley then urban area flooding coastal area flooding coastal area flooding by waves and all that urban area flooding you know very well by obstruction of human being so the water is not flowing so the fl different flooding domains are there how the geomorphology is useful in the flood mapping we will see it so you see how how the coastal flooding takes place all the barrier ridges why the sand dunes are called barrier ridges the sand dunes all along the coast in clo closer to the shore line is called barrier it act as a barrier so that no flooding takes place in the inland area but many times it breached by nature it breached by the uh, you know human being uh, slowly by weathering and other eolian activity the height is reduced the flooding now this is a very so much water as inland flooding has taken place so we need a coastal morphological map inland morphological map and particularly the fluvial Uh, you know, like uh, any area uh, for a, a floodplain study, we need to have yeah yeah. What are the past floodplain? Whether whether it is a occasional floodplain, exceptional floodplain, a very very severe rainfall by 2015 in Chennai, the water going very very far away. In occasional floodplain, this light blue. exceptional flood plain so from the river water will flow up to this point in a very very exceptionally high rainfall cloud burst so we have to mark the geomorphologist will mark on a geoplan geomorphological map what was a past flood plain limit flood plain mark terrace old terrace old terraces you see so elevated terraces so we have to mark your old from the river bed the the the, the you know the terrace uh, uh, level flood plain level to the present day 
you know the river bed level we have to mark so like that this is this kind of concept of evolved in a geomorphological map so an integrated approach to flood mapping needs uh, so flood mapping needs many thematic map geomorphological mapping is one of them in integrated map we need a basic elevation data of a study area particularly height of the study area whether it be, what are the height now we have got lidar and other technique we have to prefer not in meter in centimeter level contour interval has come now so so we have to prefer for example chennai is there we have to prefer a contour plan at the centimeter level we have to work out the uh, you know the small centimeter elevation what is the elevation at annanagar what is the elevation at uh, you know kotrubaram what is the elevation at egmore or like that even for you take for kadalur also what will be the elevation devanam koppa what is the elevation at the old kadalur like that a micro elevation data is needed so we need a dump detail elevation model or a dump detail detail elevation or a dump by lidar or rand survey or srtm dump in course resolution available freely so we know which area is morphologically higher which area is morphologically lower at a medium level with respect to mean sea level this is the coast na with respect to mean sea level the best document required is the elevation data for a flood mapping so morphology and its elevation is very much needed so landform mapping the you know, flood plains and coastal plain are reason it is a <clears throat> very much needed so mapping of the flood plain and coastal plain landforms are very essential you no know, geomorphological exercise uh, okay, that is uh, carried out so any scientist doing that so we one has to from the river bed uh, uh, the flood plain mapping with respect to all the various you know the paleo channel meanders so all the you need to be demarcated for example see you see this is the coastal dune this is the sea this is the sea this is the coastal dune this is a much higher level so this may not be that much flood prone so if our map we mark all the coastal dune we can say this is safe, more or less safe from the flood point but lower level tidal flat ha eh, or the paleo tidal flat where tidal water flows in more made up of clay material and all that ha eh, so this is more risky you have simple morphology until the simple morphology will identify this area is more flood prone this area is less flood prone so we will map it as a you know coastal dunal complex as a tidal flat like that so like again see i show you a spit growth in the first slide i showed you no this is this this spit will allows the you know the flood water to get out suppose if this is glowing and this is more or less closed also the flooding of the surrounding area will takes place so morphologically how the spit is growing how the morphology is facilitating in enhancing flooding or you know diluting the flood this, this is needed so the, the flood water after all most of the river flows into the sea most of the flood water should go back to the sea but if this is closed by the human activity or natural spit growth the flooding will take place in the surrounding low level area low leveling area to be decided by the elevation data so a simple coastal you know morphological exercise a creek mouth how how it enhances to you know map the flood mapping we are we can see so we will know jamrama can show why the flooding will not necessarily occur every part of it everywhere flooding will not occur geomorphology will give you where it can occur river terraces are at higher upstanding higher level area whereas alluvium or low lying area it will be flooded their materials are different so the case, the clay rich for example clay rich area ha uh, uh, anna nagar area the kk nagar clay rich area the water percolation will be less and there will be more runoff more flooding whereas besan nagar tiruvannur ainavaram and all that if for chennai i am telling for the participant or other city also they can imagine like that clay area facilitate more runoff more flooding sand will absorb the sand will absorb infiltration will be more and there will be more uh, you know percolation there will be more water will go in flooding will be less in a sandy area so demarcate by geomorphology combine with the geology uh, so to so define the flood susceptibility mapping geomorphology the basic tool so for the active flood plain and all that so we will ultimately come yeah yeah flood zonation map of a very high, very high flood prone area uh, moderate flood prone area low flood prone area so the high flood prone area are the with the one meter flood height 
flood height, flood limit light is more than one meter. Uh, so these are landform includes active river channel, abandoned river channel. So like that, some of the morphological units are high susceptibility to flooding. Some of the morphology, I told you some ridges and sand ridges and all that, they are they are low susceptible to flooding. So any morphological mapping always gives us clue. Any, any student can completely work on that, work on your, whether you are in the inland area, you are in a Coimbatore or in Salem or in Chennai or in any other town you go, Bombay, Kerala, the annual flooding. So understanding the geomorphology of the terrain is highly important to emphasize you. I have given this, uh, you know, this one. Now uh, we are uh, almost uh, coming to the end of that. We will see how the geomorphology is helpful in locating some of the mineral deposits also. So mineral deposits are, so the first and foremost, any mineral exploration activity, when we go to the field also, the morphology is to be studied to locate any mineral. We will prepare a geological map, but the morphology expresses, yeah, some area will have some ridges. Some area will have low plate. For example, the quartz and zinc load in the, the quartz vein, quartz vein, they stand up, they, they, they stand up, they stand out prominently. So when we go through the, some of the area looking, taking geological traverses, all of a sudden we see some ridges, we have to suspect that. Maybe some, you know, the, 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 the a, a resistant log, like an intrusive rock or a quartz vein uh, containing, uh, the, it, it scavenges the mineral. So we see that, uh, um, uh, you know, the uh, gold or a lead or a zinc. Uh, so whether it may be there to map the quartz vein, the terrain uh, evaluation, the geomorphology is very important. Uh, for example, kimberlite pipe, it is a circular, circular pipe uh, with a carrot shape. So we have to look first and foremost in any you know, diamond search on the terrain before sampling or doing some, we have to see whether any circular features are there. Uh, in Andhra Pradesh and Karnataka or in Panna. So we get some circular pipes are there. So the, the, the basic morphometry is important. And then we change in the soil color, it will give some indication, some kimberlite pipes are there. So then placer deposit along the you know, coastal placer and in the fluvial placer, the golds are there, then more, more, the monocyte, ilmenite and all that. There is a separate morphological expression. There is a separate morphological expression by the lithological control and structural control, uh, which was the mineral deposit. There will be some, some uh, clue to the mineral explorer where to look for mineral. So you see a kimberlite pipe here. Uh, so you, you see a, you see a circular, a circular zone with the change in the soil color. You see here. So you, you see from a higher elevation or satellite imagery. Yeah, so we can suspect this can be a this can be a circular, a carrot shaped, you know, uh, yeah, kimberlite or a, uh, uh, this one, some ultra potassium rock which can host the, uh, you know, the uh, the diamond uh, bearing one. So like that, these are the quartz when I show you a positive expression. Uh, then the banded iron formation which can host gold and all that in Salem and wherever you go or in Thiruvannamalai or in Southern Tamil Nadu, it has a prominent expression. It's a, you know, marker horizon. It, 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 it facilitates in mapping the structure, the morphological expression of the host rock by its resistant to erosion, whether it's a banded iron formation or magnet quartzite or a quartz vein uh, or any host rock, it has its own distinct expression as per the mineral occurrences. The bosons and all that will have some, uh, not all will have positive features, some will have negative features also. So, so that, 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 that is the um, uh, clue it gives for geomorphology giving clue to mineral exploration. A bauxite, you see a top benches. Uh, you, 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 you see here, so the top benches contain a simple morphological expression of the bauxite at the you know, plateau on top. And these are the bauxite deposits. Uh, you see the picture here at the top level. Mm. So we we can we can we, we are we, we cannot looking for bauxite at the lower level area at all. We have to see at the you know leaching area at the top uh, above the or associated with the laterite uh, some bauxite deposit at the cliff uh, as a capping. It has its own morphological expression. So geomorphology plays a great role in mineral search also. We emphasize that. So 
Jomar uh, Pali has a lot of other applications, like tourist, best tourist sites, whether it's a Yellowstone National Park in New US, Glacial National Park, or a, uh, you know, a hot spring area, or a coastal uh, beaches. They have the scenic, scientific, cultural, and economic interest. Many of the geomorphological sites are of great tourist place, which can give income to the government and give relaxment to the public. A great social application is there in the geomorphological site. So in geomorphology, some of the landforms give, you give the indication, another, another use, another societal application, past climate. What was the past climate? Huh? What is the, uh, how in, from the Pleistocene onwards, or from the, you know, from the Mesozoic time to uh, onward, what were the climatic changes, how the landform got altered, there will be number of denudational or erosional plane will be there. So it may be a tropical area with a lot of rainfall or subtropical or a dry area. So climatic changes will be indicated by studying the landform. And engineering geology, dam site selection, a narrow gorges are more useful. Dams are to be located in narrow gorges. Then on a uh, you know, flat and a very large valley, a low river and valley to be avoided for dam construction. Dam construction, you have to locate a narrow gorge. So like that number of innumerable applications geomorphology has got. So students, put your mind on the geomorphology. Don't ignore it. Ah, so thank you so much. So it is a, a geomorphology has got a huge potential and, and a, the society has got benefited from the time immemorial for the geomorphological study. But one has to go deeper. We have to you know, understand the whole process yeah. how, how, how that land unit is formed by the geomorphological agents and how it got evolved. Uh, what is its role for us in guiding the number of applications? I told you about the, uh, you know, um, from the groundwater location to even to the army. We started from the defense application, the groundwater application, the flooding and mineral search and landslide study. Uh, and in the seismology, the huge, I stopped it. I stopped it because time consuming, time constraint. Just to give you a clue, uh, do a good research in geology, come out successfully in life. Thank you so much. I thank the HOD for providing the opportunity and all the best to the, all the students. And I sincerely thank all the participants also. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, any questions you can ask? You can raise or anything and you can unmute and ask. Students? Uh, Srinivasan sir, Dr. Srinivasan sir, there are some questions. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, is there any scope of for identifying low inundation areas using drone survey? Any identifying any? Low inundation areas. Uh, low inundation area mm -hmm. by drone, drone. Drone, drone, yeah. Now drone is very famous during yeah, Corona. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, see. Earlier aerial photos were there, then satellite images came. Now drone is fitted with the camera only. So it will it will completely a large drone advantage being it will give a large scale photograph. Okay. okay. So it will fly at a low height, it will give a low lying area, a flat area, it will it will appear. So we will automatically know this area will be flooded compared to a higher level area. I told you about that lidar and all that. The elevation data that is actually a low flying mechanism only to get the elevation level. Okay, okay. Sir, another question. Is the Chennai is vulnerable for flood prone, flooding prone area. What are the mitigation followed for construction of Chennai underground metro project? Chennai? Construction of Chennai underground metro project. What are the mitigation or followed? I don't know. This question is a bit off the my I can answer. I'll answer. I am the right person for to answer that also yeah. because of my engineering geological you know expertise. But eh, this question is slightly away for geomorphology and uh, this one. Chennai, the first question itself, number Tata Kaltele and the party Kaltele and the Epo Padal and the Madras are Tani Varada, Epo Madras flooding Irkarada. So 2015, Chennai is a flood prone, everyone knows. So it's on the doubt. Underground Metro, they have taken a sufficient care to avoid the you know, percolation of the water into the tunnel. So that you, those areas have been completely uh, you know, sealed are grouted, are protected, to, allow, to not to allow much seepage into the tunnel. So even though flood prone, the metro rail is flowing through the flood prone area, they are taken care geotechnically. Sir, one more question. Uh, the, for geomorphological mapping, which satellite data is best? 
See, it all started with the Landsat and um, American satellite. Then resolution, it was all one kilometer was there. Then seventy meter came. Then uh, it came to thirty meter IRS Indian remote sensing satellite. Then CartoSat came, one meter resolution. Then spots French satellite. So it depends on the resolution. So now they are showing for the Indochina conflict some satellite photo, some planet or something which they are giving immense detail. Google image is also. So it depends on the uh, resolution. What is your purpose? What is your objective? See, if you want to a very very small area to study in much greater detail, take a satellite imagery of CartoSat, which has got a one meter resolution or a five meter resolution. You take that Indian IRS, uh, IRS imagery, CartoSat for your detailed application. For a regional application, you go for IRS one C one D and all that. List three image. Okay, sir. Sir, there are some questions asking about the data, mm. and uh, I, I forward you. You can answer afterwards also. No, no. Now also they can ask. Uh, there is um, do do we get any portal for uh, portal for global level uh, vector data and also they are asking. Uh, so no, but global level uh, it is a uh, depends on the data sharing and uh, it is a uh, uh, global vector data. See, people spend money. People put a man manpower effort. They they prepare, digitize the map. They vectorize, see the rasterize, put it. So if it is so much easily downloadable, uh, then then uh, um, it becomes a fine one. There can there there are some more easily downloadable vector data. Some more uh, restricted. Some may be available. Some may not be available. It depends on the individual organization which we have prepared or digitized or vectorized, and uh, uh, it depends on the uh, you know. Um, That organization which created the data and the your objective also. So there is one. I can answer. Important. Yeah, yeah. You please ask. Please ask. Ask, ask, ask. Hey, Chini, Dr. Yes, Sridhar. Yes. Ah, tell us, tell us. Uh, the first question is, uh, I think these geomorphology maps are available in Bhuvan. Ah, ah, ah. Okay, NRC website. If they go to Bhuvan, they can search. They can download. Okay. But shape files are not being given. Ah, oh, that's okay. what I am telling. They won't. Yeah. Give... First thing. Second thing is, I just want to know, hmm. 2015 floods in Chennai hmm. is a man-made or is it due to the natural thing? No, it is a again. A, it's a okay. I, I I definitely I can answer this question because the geomorphology as it is as it is because of the 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 unbearable. the cloud burst the extraordinary uh, the very heavy rain in uh, you know centimeter and 24 cm 30 cm on a 40 cm on a single day the terrain is not able to accommodate the geomorphological land units of the chennai city is not able to withhold so much water pouring in naturally it will suffer if we eat more food stomach pain will come or diarrhea will come so our no. body will have to you know flood only so, so what i heard one, is then that one Then maybe again the question of you know holding some water in the dam and opening it in time and you do not know see if you release water from dam also you it will be a waste if you if you if you don't release also it will lead to uh, flooding when you open at the last minute so it's a cumbersome for the civil engineers so now there are some protocol has come from central water authority now the gate so it is a combination of natural and a man. Okay. Next question. Book Chini, it is well taken care of. Your presentation is very nice. Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for being here. Thanks for spending your time. Thank you. Any any questions from uh, student side from North India people? Those who want to clear something can ask now. They can without any inhibition, without any. Ah, uh, this, this is Kumar Guru. All are known to me, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, I have one question. You are talking yes, about this Kalivili tank. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, it's such a large tank, old uh, Paleo Lagoon, and all this thing got dried up, and now it's uh, uh, occurring as a small lake, something like that. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is it uh, uh, is it only because of the choking of that uh, inland inland flow of that washing water? Absolutely. Or would absolutely, there be absolutely, any absolutely, absolutely uplift? Uplift. Coastal that is quaternary. Yes, sir. Uplift. No, 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 sir. The the now. the 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 main main problem of coastal problem of the whole tamil nadu coast itself that uh, 
uh, the mugadwara madapu or the creek mouth closure or the mouth getting blocked so what is happening that sea water is not coming in that's what in mutukadu or the every place is happening sir we need sea water to come in for the experience set up for the growth of the mangrove or for the sustaining luxurious sustaining of the lagoon so kaliwali lagoon got suffered because of that natural closing of the sea mouth at alambarai fort that, that is north of the pondicherry slowly getting closed then there is a element of always human interaction we told we are in anthropocene after holocene we are in anthropocene so people have modified they constructed the creek with they 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 made some salt panning south of marakanam they diverted the sea water so and there is a uh, this is the natural process of closing the creek mouth and also siltation taking place from dindivanam and all the river ongo river coming they are filling the of course the the siltation of the lagoon will nor normally takes place by the upland uh, you know deposition of material so the sea water flowing in the definition of lagoon itself is uh, you know altering fresh and sea water condition should be there here the sea water has been denied to kaliveli by the nature and the human being sir one yes, more question you. one you. more question yes, uh, from uh, navjot kaur yes uh, uh, is asking you said you are say, saying about covid 19 and geomorphology yes yes <laughs> you want I, I some clarity some, something to be discussed on it i i i i i appreciate that gentleman and i just to sustain the interest so they may not run away you know till my presentation is over so you see it is it is a it is a question of now yeah i will answer that question now uh, no no issues in that one yeah yeah um, uh, the congested area yeah yeah high population density living and um, uh, uh, you know yeah yeah by 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 broader area living that population can be classified with the morphology uh, then the another aspect of the uh, the growth of the city based on the geomorphology is there so for example we 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 take uh, you know the the yeah, yeah, chennai city even though it is spreading everywhere any student can take and uh, yeah, put a geology or geomorphology and a covid 19 red zone and try to see whether any correlation is there this much i will say suppose now i can tell for 10 minutes also uh, so but but uh, that will that will that will uh, you know completely so uh, much of spoon feeding will be there kindly correlate the covid zones with your uh, you know geomorphological and geological issue try to correlate it hello yes sir yes sir thank you uh, sir any uh, one last question i can i can say ah, no they can go any what is there no problem ah. any geomorphological features can you point near marina beach or near to it sir ah. it would be helpful for us we are asking any 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 geomorphological feature near ah. to marina beach beach itself is a geomorphology only morphology only yes ha so the point is present the college is located on a coastal uh, beach of the ridge dune yes. that is on the uh, marina beach then all the queen marys and present the college and the parsar the temple and all that they are on a dunal ridge then on the other side you you get into a, a kind of a tidal flat egmore and all that so whole chennai is a delight or the it is a geomorphology paradise if they understand correctly if they mark it they walk they 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 go by by they go by you know two wheeler or a walk and all that so many geomorphological unit they will cross from the shoreline from the marina beach to the younger dune then to a tidal flat paleo tidal flat the swelling and allure and all that which has already been shown to remember people so madavaram in the older dunal area so like that whole chennai city on a geomorphology sidney i have a last question sir ah you know any question can go ahead okay but the first thing is i think the students have asked you about the geomorphology of chennai yeah. city and all yeah. okay yeah. can you identify whether it is a degradation coast or degradation coast see chennai north chennai is um, as you know very well being completely eroded sea erosion is taking place that morphology is getting modified i told you human engineering structure 
see the 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 the, the slide which was shown shown here is uh, there is a you know changes in the uh, engineering structure which is uh, um, you know human interference and uh, uh, there is a changes in the this one the geotechnical engineering so it is a uh, north chennai is completely being uh, you know uh, eroded so that is a um, not an accretion accretion takes place in the marina beach which is a very common uh, knowledge and in the north chennai or north of marina beach in the rayapuram and tiruvattur ennur and all that the erosion is taking place okay if so accretion is taking place yeah. is it due to construction of port correct it is a of course that is a completely understood sir when you construct a perpendicular structure due to littoral drift sediment on the based on a direction one side there will be accumulation of sediment on the other side there will be a you know erosion of the sediment the sediment will be missed they are all called groins they have got lot of groins the chennai port acts as a groin so when a perpendicular structure are hindrance to the Uh, you know the, um, the littoral drift the coastal uh, sediment movement offshore sediment movement littoral sediment movement there will be a on the the the, the, the one side there will be a, you know deposition of sediment one side erosion so the marina beach is due to that sir one more important question of yes, current situation yes, yes, yes. from taduri sai kumar uh, uh, can you elaborate the geomorphology in military uh, operations military operations uh, geomorphology oh, is applications in military military yes yes i told you that is the fundamentally that is a uh, <coughs> to you to understand terrain evaluation tell geologists are recruited for that there is a ntro is there in delhi they recruit geologists army recruit geologists for analyzing the terrain there is adrin in uh, uh, you know hyderabad so defense wise you must know the terrain in which we are the the, 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 the our 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 a uh, unit has to be kept so various kind of hills or a valley or the river flowing i told you what is the disadvantage and advantage of moving in a terrain or meeting a enemy is guided by the guided by the geomorphology thank you sir major, thank you major concern is geomorphology only. see the, the 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 some rivers are getting blocked some rivers are coming down Uh, we are we are at a vulnerability of hiding in some uh, gullies, hiding on a hill slopes. Then other maybe on a plain, other side maybe a plain. You may be on a hill top to see the enemy. You may be on a hill top to see the enemy. So it is a it is an important aspect. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. You are answered almost. Sir, so much. Still questions are coming, but time is not uh, permitting us to. And I am ready. Yeah. If it is up to the HOD, I it is up to the HOD or the no, uh, you know organizer to decide. We are I already. I enjoy the I enjoy the question. I I really no issue because my lecture, as I told you, I finished it within an hour. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is over. So, so thank uh, you very much. More interaction is needed. More interaction. More interaction. Is needed. any any students can directly ask directly questions to sir if yeah, they are yeah, interested yeah. ask them to unmute sir thank you sir students can ask questions other persons can mute your audio hello anybody is there to ask questions charles illa sir edo charles shall we can shall we conclude Yes, sir. No okay. Uh, and because of our department, Department of Geology, Presidency College, and uh, Principal Presidency College and staff members, I heartfully thank Dr. R. Srinivasan for giving a wonderful presentation. And there was an uh, excellent questions. Questions are still coming. I will be forwarding you to to the to you, okay. and you can answer the questions in the mail. So. will be uh, in in future they you can guide some students also will be uh, having okay. doubts in your mind okay. thank you for all the participants who has actively participated in this uh, webinar with today's program tomorrow we'll meet tomorrow is again 10 o'clock 9:50 everybody should log in you should log in with audio muted that is most important because some noise is always coming so the presenter is feeling difficult kindly mute your audio Uh, my voice was audible my voice was audible no problem it, it yeah, was no. clear sir it was clear okay okay it was clear 
thank you so much sir dr sinjil thank you thank you thank you thank so you thank, thank you sincerely thank, thank you thank hod and the other participant thank you so much thank you thank you sir thank you very much thank so now uh, sir, sir please sir sir go to sir sir solunga sir, sir. 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 இத முடிச்சிட்டேன்னா நம்மளுக்கு ஒரு 5 நிமிஷம் 